Hey folks, I'm Tim. Welcome to The Restoration Couple. In today's video, we're going to be hanging gates, two of them to be precise, which means double the trouble. Let's make a start and I'll show you how I got on. We are doing a bit of a gate install, a pair of gates actually. Uh, it's part and parcel of a bit of fencing that's going in today. But I thought I'd bring you along for the ride to show you how we're going to get these in. This fence line here is going to be normal stock fencing, which just keeps livestock off kind of the nicer part of the grass. We're going to put double gates in up here rather than using steel gates, we've gone for nice timber gates. These are from Charlton's. Put out a line of poly wire here just as a bit of a string line. So this dictates kind of where the current approved line of the garden will be. Tom and Rob are getting a strainer in down that end. So basically, there'll be sheep net all the way along here, double gates, and then we're gonna carry on on the same line. Because although all of this up here is part of the farm side of things, and it's all agricultural land, this will be planted up with a hedgerow along here, it's part of our stewardship scheme. Goes right up to the top end, which is also a new hedge all the way down. There'll be a fence on the left-hand side. These fruit trees are probably thin out every other but basically this will be the access up to the little market garden above. Anyway, that's the plan. First job is to see if we can revive the mini digger. So this team member seems to have become a bit of a long-term hire. Hasn't been picked up yet, so it's handy to have it here. Question is, will it have battery? That's a pain because we are no way near close enough to get jump leads in here. Well, that could spell the end of that plan. How close can I get a truck? I managed to get the truck close enough, but now I lost the key. Where have I put that? It's in the back, isn't it? I've done that before. I've wasted an hour looking for that before. We'll get it a bit of love in before we use it. She lives. Trying to get this truck out now. Right, we're almost ready to start digging now. So what I'm gonna do first up is just tidy up the edge here because it will be a situation in the future where we wanna be able to drive up here. But what happens is, until this grass really established, this new grass, the soil just washes away and what you see here is all the soil is washed down and kind of weeded up our gravel. Now at some point we need to turn to hand work and get this dug so we don't end up with a massive hole to fill with concrete. These posts have got to go down four feet so it's a big old hole but obviously you end up with a longer, it's about right this way because we're a seven inch or 175 post but we're too wide this way but we can backfill a little bit let's just get it probably 50% deeper and then we'll go in with the hand tools and do a bit of manual labour. We've got a load of post grate, but I've also got two bulk bags of concrete to knock up for other things this week. So we can start off with post grate to set the posts and then I'm going to backfill and, you know, I want these posts to last. This bit is not temporary. This fits kind of our nice field gates to look at.
Right, so both posts are in now. Uh, at this point, it looks a little bit crazy because our ground is sloping quite a lot. And when you're hanging a pair of gates, obviously you want to make sure everything's nice and level. So this one needs to come up, the ground level needs to come up. And what I'll be doing is doing that before we hang the gates, just so it looks right. Because at the moment, it looks like this post is a lot higher. Well, it is compared to the ground level, but using the laser level, they're bang on at the top. So everything will look right, just we're going through a funny phase. We've got to set our strainer, in this case it's a box strainer, away from the post because the last thing we want to do is pull our fence, our gate posts over. So we'll be setting that so the fence is independent and we'll just rail this last bit to make that stock proof. And over here, again we've got sheep net going up at the top, but we've got a slope here so what we'll probably do is angle the rails up the bank. Then what I'll be doing is grading all of this away once that post has gone off overnight, grade all this away. I'll pull the gravel back, grade all the soil over there, and I guess that's probably what I should have done to start with. Right, morning all, we're back on it. I'm gonna crack on and get these gates done because I can't be distracted by any other jobs. I've gotta do one job at a time. That's the plan for this week. So our posts are now absolutely solid. Really pleased with those. Uh, I overdug the hole, but that means loads of concrete in there. They're not gonna move over time. Uh, so win-win there. What we wanna do now is start getting the hardware on the gates so they're ready to hang. Now, if you were doing a fancy driveway gate where you didn't want any visible hardware and you wanted it all on the back, then you would not use this style. Um, but for field gate or driveway gates in this sort of five bar configuration or just nice timber gates, these are a really good way to go uh, and kind of the normal way, I would say. Hopefully everything's in here. We've got bolts, nuts there. That's going to be able to fix through the timber top rail and the bottom rail. And this is an adjustable one, which means that rather than being able to adjust top and bottom threads, like on a metal farm gate, um, these are only adjustable on the bottom, but that still allows you to get the, the kind of pitch of the gate right, so you can be nice and level. And if there is any movement over time, which hopefully there isn't, but you know, it's inevitable, uh, then this can be tweaked to make sure that your level, that your pair of gates are gonna level, because there's nothing worse than a droopy pair. All right, hopefully it's not too windy. So this is the first piece to go on uh, the top hinge and we are using gates which are left and right hand left and right hand hung let me show you what the difference is this gate here is a left hand gate if you're looking at it from the front and the front is the side with the smooth head on the bolts which is here so there is a difference in the two styles of gates that i bought yesterday uh, these are a traditional one with a tapered top rail so this rail here is probably 150 deep and it narrows down to about 100 mil the other end it's also got a much wider style on this end than it does on the latch end and all of that i guess just helps make this end of the gate lighter less chance of sagging but the downside of that is that you do have a left and a right hand and you can't just pick up a bunch of gates and use them wherever you want you need to kind of make sure you can get a pair again here's the other side and you can see that it tapers down and it's clearly got a wider side to it. The Forester version is slightly smaller timbers, but it's universal. And I bought one of those for up here because it's up out of the way and it doesn't have quite the same chamfered edges and things like that. But both sides are exactly the same, smooth bolts on one side, but the rail at the top is universal. So you can flip it either side and hinge it either side.
And what I've been doing is drilling from both sides. That just makes, makes sure that if your drill has wandered off a little bit, you know it's coming out in the right place. So drill just over halfway from each side and then the bolt will always find the right hole. We want to make sure we get our dome side of our bolts to match the others and that they'll be on the front side. And because they've just got a square square hole, you need to make sure that the square little section at the end of the bolt is going to line up and lock in there. All right, now we've got all the hardware on the gates. A little bit of tightening up to do, but I'll wait for the end to do that. Um, I've now just tied up the gate got it level on the block the other side. I know that this gate is the one that I kind of want to set the other one off. So rather than a, a fitting that you'd screw a bolt through, uh, the bottom one is the drive-in, like a normal field gate drive-in. And then the top one is our adjustable one. And you can see it's got a threaded section, which will drive through and we'll be able to tighten it from the other side. And then the square bit, which is what kind of binds it into the post. We could hang the pin a little bit closer to this edge which means the gate won't bind up on the post and that might be beneficial on the other post where we want it to swing beyond 90 degrees so what i'll do is i'm going to set them probably a third of the way in from this edge Don't want to knock our post around too much. All right, our top pin is now in and I can knock it in a little bit further if I need to, but I don't want to go in too far and have the gate binding on this corner. So I've measured down, uh, well I've offered the gate up and marked up the bottom one and drilled that. Uh, obviously square peg and a round hole, so that's going to lock it in place and it shouldn't take too much to whack it in. Um, this one we're going to go in and probably get it to about the same as the top one, then we can always adjust it a little bit. I want to keep the gaps as small as possible just for the poultry and predators and all sorts, but uh, for now uh, we should be able to get it in. Double check that we're heading in the right direction. Looks good to me. Now the most difficult part of it all, dropping it on. Should be right, they're quite short gates. First time. From a security point of view, we could flip the top one if you didn't want them to be lifted off, but I do want to be able to lift them off because I might need extra access and uh, yeah, it's not an issue. I will just put a pin through that hole there because our pigs are quite good, if they're ever up here for any reason, at lifting gates off their hinges. So the right hand gate now is hung I'll, and I'll level it off later. What I want to do now is before I start drilling the hinges into the other posts, I want to use the laser level just to make sure that the tops of our posts are the same and then I can measure down and match it up. Eight three five, eight three four a millimetre, we'll have it. I don't mind this gap being a sensible size. So at the moment they're pretty much touching. So that just means I can knock my pin in a little bit more up there on the top. So as long as we hide that sharpening mark into the timber, we should give us a nice sensible gap in the middle. And then I can measure up and put the bottom one in.
so close still so far uh, let me show you where I'm going wrong as it stands this gate is hanging level now and the gap is acceptable here in actual fact you cannot have any less than that if you're hinging it like we are I'm really pleased I went closer to one corner because there's no way this gate would have opened to 90 degrees uh, well it still isn't to be honest let me show you push those apart so as this comes round you can see what's going to happen it's just going to bind up there so if the pin was a little bit closer then the corner of the post would swing into this section of the hardware but I didn't really want it too close any closer than this just seems I don't know, a bit risky that it could split. So at the moment, we are not even at 90 degrees on this gate. This is the one that will only be opened on the odd occasion, but I'd like it to go 90, which leaves me two options. One is to back everything out a little bit, but of course, because we're a double gate, that causes issues the other side. The other is just to put an enlarged chamfer down this side of the post, which should ease the edge enough for everything to clear. The wood isn't going to bind up, I don't think, so it's only really the two brackets. Obviously, if these pins were on this side of the post, that would be an option, but I don't know if that's as strong. I feel like this is the strongest way to hang a gate with them going in, um, in line with the gate. So this one now will open far enough, and I'm just going to... Oh, we've got a racing pigeon. Um, can I help you? Where have you come from? Maggie gave him a bit of motivation, he's back on the race. Okay, so we, what do we need to do? We just need to check that this isn't binding too much, but I'm just gonna take a chisel, or am I? Yeah, let's mark it up, I'm just gonna notch so I can make sure that I'll stay Well, in. I've carried on and done a bit more work with the digger. I've done a little retaining bit over there with some timber just to make sure that the silt and the soil doesn't continue to come down and wash down into this gravel. So it's a medium term solution. There's just a couple of cedar boards that I had kicking around, some of the old fence posts driven in. And then what I'll do is probably get another two or three tons of type one and just compact it in layers just to ramp up gradually on this section. That'll still allow the gate to fully open, but it means I can drive up there with a the trailer into the garden up at the top and because this is like a grass track. I've intentionally gone for 10 foot gates. 10 foot gates will allow me to drive through comfortably one leaf only, uh, and that's all that's needed most of the time. So this left hand one makes more sense, I think, just because of the approach angle. So going in and out with the truck and the tractor will be using the left hand gate. Therefore, what I'll probably do is dig a little footing uh, where they join below it, uh, a little pad, I should say, and then in that we'll set our little sleeve which is where we can put a drop bolt so this leaf will drop into that holding it nice and solid um, they do silt up a little bit as long as i make it deeper than it needs to be it should be okay so we'll drop that one in and this one will then just hold tight and then what i need to do is decide on how they join now what i did purchase is a, a hook over latch or a throw over type latch which is just like a bracket which folds over from one I know it sounds petty, but if you're doing three trips a day out to the fields with a truck and you can just swing it shut into a field latch, which is just when it will catch, it's going to be far easier. So what I'm thinking is I'll do that. I'll put a catch on this gate and hopefully then it'll swing in and catch. I could still do a throw over one, um, but I just something quite nice about being able to just push the gate shut and know I can head off and, and see it catch behind me. Just to recap, because obviously in the comments people tend to ask different things. Uh, so the gates are called Charlton Summerfield gates. Charlton Forester is the one that's universal. You can go right or left. The posts I used were 175 square uh, or 7 inch square and they're 8 foot. I think you could probably get away with 7 foot. It depends on the soil type. We're quite soft here, so going deeper was better. And obviously we ended up using post creek at the bottom to set them square. And then I probably did three or four mixes in the uh, mixer of concrete. So they are super solid now. And I know, I feel confident and they're not going to budge. In addition, we'll be railing from here up to our fencing. The hardware was a kit. So it came with the adjustable bottom bracket and the top bracket and 
the drive in uh, and through bolt. One thing to say is just don't skimp on fixings. If you're going to spend, well, in this case, they were £150 each or thereabouts, but you know, you could be spending £2,000 on driveway gates. Don't get the cheapest screw fix hardware, get something that's decent that, that matches the quality of the gates. These are uh, tend to be in all the gate suppliers. I can't remember what they're called, Gate Master or something like that. They're okay, but when you look at the galvanized, I don't think they're as good as they could be. So I'm gonna keep an eye on those, but where I've banged with a hammer, um, I might just give it a little spray of zinc, just because I'm fussy like that. And of course, don't do what I did and only leave whatever that is, 100 mil or probably less because it will bind up unless these are in a different position. So if you, if you can do it in a way that you're gonna end up with a bigger gap there, then do that <laughs> because it's gonna be far easier in the long term. And finally, one stage which I didn't really show is to set out the post right at the beginning. Uh, we lay down the gates on the floor. So we lay the gates, gap in the middle, and then match up the hardware to account for that space we just probably underestimated how much gap we needed. So it probably did need a little bit more, but you know, it is what it is and we made it work. That's my first attempt at hanging a pair of gates. A little bit fussy, still a few little tweaks to do, but like I said, I'm gonna get everything else done and then I'll finish that off when we do the hardware. Well, there we go. Hope you enjoyed that one. If you've got any questions, as always, sit them down below in the comment section. I'll leave it there. Thanks for watching. Remember, if you can, do it yourself and we'll see you next time. Hey folks, welcome to the channel. Today's video is all about gates. This double care. <laughs> hey folks, welcome back to the channel. Today's video is all about gates, double gates, fussy gates. Let me show you how we got these hung and all the problems I encountered along the way. <laughs>